Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. Happy Sunday. Thank you for joining us at our YouTube channel. My name is Reverend Mike Schoonover and I'm the minister here at Unity Way Church. We are a metaphysical church, which means that we go behind the words, behind the ideas, behind the principles that we know that we can use and apply to our life. A metaphysical church is in a Protestant tradition, if you're looking through a Western lens. But we look through all sacred scriptures looking for truth, gleaning the truth that we can use and we can implement in our own soul life so we truly can live a transformed life here and now. So I invite you this morning to open your mind, open your heart. And open your soul as we're going to be going into this, the theme of Advent, especially a little bit more in detail during this service, that you may get a nugget, a gold nugget that you can take with you and use this week to truly transform, transfigure your own life. Our opening affirmation is from Wings of Prayer, and it's from December the 3rd, 1933. In truth, there is one God, one principle of good, one law of life. I invite you this morning just to breathe into that truth, that idea that there's one God, one principle, and one law of life. Let's breathe that in fully. Let's hold that breath, and then let's release it. Let us know that we are rooted, that we are anchored in this one power and one presence. And we know that we have incarnated onto this third dimensional plane to live the life that our soul has chosen to live, which means that we do not believe in a God of two powers. We believe in a universe and a presence of one power, one law and one life. And the divinity within us, what we call ourselves, is actually this God essence in expression. And again, I invite you to breathe that truth in, claim it. Claim it and know it. Not, just don't know about it, but feel it all the way down in your solar plexus. That it truly can become a part of your daily consciousness. Because when it becomes a part of your consciousness, that's how you change your life. That's how we change our field of attraction. And if you believe that high truth calling with me, I invite you to use the mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. This is the second Sunday of the month. In the second Sunday of the month, we always recite our mission and vision statement. I'm very proud of our mission and vision statement, and I believe our co-founders, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, would be very proud of them too. If you would please join me. The mission of Unity Way Church is to empower ourselves and others to grow spiritually by teaching and living unity principles of practical Christianity. And now our vision statement. Unity Way Church is a center where people of all ages come together for healing, prayer, meditation, spiritual growth, education, service, and fellowship. And we know those are high ideals, but we claim them and we know them and we realize that when we live in a metaphysical life, and live through a metaphysical consciousness and with a metaphysical lens, we truly can live those bold ideas. Starting this morning, this Sunday, right here and right now. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. This is also the third week in Advent. And as the third week in Advent, we will be lighting a candle for love. And I and remind you that the first candle of Advent was for hope and faith. The second week of Advent was for peace or shalom. And this week, the third week in Advent is for love. I'd like to share a little history about Advent. Uh, Advent really means the coming of this Christ. It's a perspective. It's a re-giving to our own consciousness the depth and the understanding and the wisdom that the birthing of this Christ essence within us can mean for our own lives. Since 1153 AD, Christians have spoken of the three comings of Christ in the flesh in Bethlehem, in our hearts, and in the glory of our own indwelling souls. And that last one's kind of hard sometimes to really wrap our minds around. Because even though we are, quote, human, we also know that we are divine. And that's one of the things that we get to glean, we get to really express during this Christmas or Advent season. 
I invite you to join with me the affirmation for this, uh, this week or this uh, Sunday in Advent. It is, I am Christ, love now. If you join me, I am Christ, love now. And again, let's just breathe in that truth. Claim it, know it. It is who we are. And again, we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now here is Kristen with our daily word. Hello. I'm glad to announce that the word for today is love. Love lights my way. In this Advent season, I prepare my heart for the rebirth of my inner Christ child. I take a moment to connect with the spirit of love within. Sometimes this season may seem to be about presents, food, and celebration, but it's really about love. Love is the power upon which the whole world revolves, especially at this busy time of year. I want to stay attuned to the love of the Christ within. Through this reciprocal power of love, I give what I give returns to me abundantly. Love transcends all transforming any perceived negativity into a blessing. I express love in all my words and actions. I may give a plate of homemade food or send a heartfelt note of appreciation. Whatever I do, let the love in my heart be my guide. And from Mark 12, 31, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater. And again, the affirmation, love lights my way. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. And we do know that love lights the way. Love lights the way for all of us. It's that special word, love. But bef before we get into my talk this morning, I want to share a wonderful Christmas-like comic with you. And it shows Santa in his sled, and he has all his presents there, and he's with all his reindeers, and oh, oops, look. Oh, one of his reindeers is laying sideways. He has a flat tire. Only at Christmas time could you have a comic like that. But we know that reindeer will get back up on his hoofs and he'll be able to get those presents to us before Christmas Eve. From my minister's joke page, I have some Christmas little ditties I want to share with you. The first uh, uh, joke I'd like to share with you is a question. It's, what's every elf's favorite type of music? What kind of music do you think the elves listen to when they're putting, putting all the presents together at the North Pole? I'm going to tell you. It's called rap. <laughs> I knew you knew what I was going to say. Oh, you got to love it. Rap. You get rap and presents. Come on, guys. It's Christmas. Put a grin on your face. Come on. Another little Christmas ditty. Why are Christmas trees so bad at knitting? Think about that. Why would Christmas trees be so bad at knitting. I'm going to share with you. They have too many sharp needles. That's why they can't do any good knitting because they're always having a problem with the needles. All is good. Laughter and joy are truly the sign of the presence of God. So allow yourself to laugh and do not think by laughing or having a giggle or a smile on your face is in any way being sacrilegious during this Christmas season. I'm a firm believer that we don't laugh enough and we should have more smiles on our face, especially in this Advent season. If we remembered who we are and this Sunday, we're remembered to love. We're married to love ourselves and love our neighbors. This morning, my talk title is love to love. That phrase love to love. And I'm going to be weaving through some ideas of Advent through this week of understanding what love can mean for each and every one of us. I'd like to first say that the word, well, before we do that, I have to sync up with sign unity. I almost forgot. I invite you just to become still just for a moment and close your eyes if you're comfortable and just picture yourself back at Unity Village. You're back at Unity Village and you have all the fountains are going and it's at nighttime now and the lights are on. And then we're taken to the silent Unity Chapel. And in that sacred chapel are all our prayer claims or all the prayer claims that we send and all the different prayer claims that Silent Unity 
receives asking for prayer. And we know that the individual sitting in that chair, sitting in that sacred space at the Silent Unity Chapel at Unity Village in Missouri, that they are truly there by a divine appointment. And we affirm by the power of truth that we bless those claims. And we know that every one of those claims, every one of those prayers are answered in divine, perfect truth. And by the power of omnipresence, I'd like to bring that energy into this sanctuary here right now. And as it permeates this room, I send it forth to wherever you may be, that you may feel and know that we are one with the one with silent unity. Maybe this week you could call silent unity. I don't know when the last time you've called silent unity, but it's a prayer support that we have within our unity movement and actually it's for the whole world. Maybe think about that calling Silent Unity this week with a prayer request or just a thank you gratitude prayer. And again, we just seal this time and know that we are blessing Silent Unity and Silent Unity is always blessing us. And we just seal it with love. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. My talk title is Love to Love. The Hebrew word for love is Ahava. But love is more than just a word. It should be. The word love should mean a lot more than just toothpaste or deodorant or uh, your favorite coffee. We're talking about a, really a divine idea that truly is the essence, truly the vibrational frequency of who we are and also the presence in which we live and move, which we call divine mind. Ahava is emotion, it's actions. And interesting in Israel too, since the uh, language that they speak in Israel is um, Hebrew, it is also a, a national understanding of what this word means. They really believe love is a way of life. This Advent, I'd invite you to find love to love. You're loving for the right reasons. You're believing in love for the right reasons. And then it truly becomes a part of your everyday experience, that everything you touch, everywhere where your presence goes, the soul within you, it touches. And you give forth a hava, this love to love. And you know it is given back to you in good measure because we live in a world of cause and effect. I like to say this love to love or the ahava love is radiant love. It's an atomic love. It's likened to the sun and its nature is simply to shine. The sun shines. The sun is always shining. It's never stopped shining. That is a hava. That's the God love that we're speaking about this morning. That is really the advent love. That is the idea of love that was used back in the Jewish scriptures and also in our New Testament. An essence, an understanding, a vibration and a frequency. Ahava love it is everything that we are and so much more. Ahava love can also be simple. It can be concrete. It can also be practical. Ahava love is truth actualized. And this is from our co-founder, Charles Fillmore. Divine love is impersonal. It loves for the sake of loving. It is not concerned with what or who it loves, nor with a return of love. There's a high idea. There's a high ideal and idea that we want to really focus on as we're going through the third week in Advent, knowing that love to love or this Ahava love is truly who we are and that we go deeper into an understanding of what it means to us individually. And this Ahava love, we seek guidance. We seek guidance through love. And we know that we do it according to our nature, which is absolute good. I would like to share with you that Ahava love never complains, is never immature. It always is exactly the way it's supposed to be in the situation. In life, there's a time we're supposed to be active. In life also, there's a time we're supposed to be passive. May Ahava love truly be the energy that we truly saturate ourselves in this Christmas season. And this is from the uh, New Testament. This is Paul's letter to the Romans, and it's chapter uh, 13, verse 10. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. What Paul's talking about is Ahava love. 
if this is the love he's talking about, an unconditioned love, a love that is always available to us if we're willing to change, to think, to turn, to be in that present moment. Ahava love energies are the great harmonizer and healer of our own minds, bodies, and souls. I'm a firm believer that we can never have enough Ahava love in our life. This Sunday, are you willing to go deeper into your understanding of love? Do you think of love only as a noun or an adjective or a verb or a direct object? It can be all those things. Because Ahava love is truly all those elements of truly a divine love that the Father, Father, Mother, God has for its creation. Whatever we call God, we know it is Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit within us, if you study scripture, it's always a female gendered word. In ancient religions, you all words are either female or uh, male. And whenever you speak of breath of the Holy Spirit, or even Havilah, which I'm speaking about, it's a female gendered word. I think that's important. Because I think we are receptive. The female energy, uh, the idea is that we're receptive. We're willing to take it on and clothe our ideas and our thoughts with the power of this understanding. I will say that Ahava love brings us our own. It adjusts all life misunderstandings. It makes our affairs happy, excuse me, healthy, happy, harmonious, and free. Who doesn't want to live in a love to love situation of thought? like that, where we have harmony, where we have happiness. And again, it's not conditioned on what's happening in the world around us. It's conditioned only by where we are in consciousness. Ahava love can open us up to more of that type of unconditioned love. And this is from Carolyn Moss. True love does not leave you a choice. What I like about that thought which she's sharing with us is when you're dealing with a, an idea of love that is unconditioned, you have no choice except to love back. That's the kind of love that the Daily Word was speaking about when we're supposed to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Do you love yourself? I guess that's a good rhetorical question for all of us, especially during this Advent season. I think it's easy to love Jesus. It's easy to love holy people. It's easy to love prophets. It's easy to love teachings. But the question is, do we love ourselves? That's really the Ahava love that we really need to get acquainted with or reacquainted with during this Advent season. In order for relationships to be in Ahava love, I also believe that they must be equal, regardless of gender. Everyone shows up at the table equally. That's the love that binds. That's a love that passes all understanding. In love, there is no manipulation. There is no yelling. There's no shaming. There's no stonewalling. There's no victim playing. Now, if you are engaged or someone you know is engaged in some of those uh, third dimensional world ideas, then you know it's a tainted love. It's truly not the Ahava love which I'm speaking about and which is not spoken about through the uh, scriptures which we study. Neither are they experiencing adult, equal, and loving relationships. When you live with a fragmented idea of love, you're not really showing up. You're not being able to experience all the gifts that this life has to offer. You're not allowing your soul to pour forth into your own life experiences. True, unconditioned, Ahava love. And this is from Michael Singer. Only you can take inner freedom away from yourself or give it to yourself. Nobody else can. One of the things we learn in truth is that we are about self-actualization. Only we can say, I am that I am. No one can say it for us. This morning, as we're studying Advent and this idea of love and what it can mean, this unconditioned Ahava love, I'd invite you to go deeper and use it with all of your I am statements. Make it a part of your identity. When you think of Ahava love as a verb, it becomes dynamic and it requires a uh, mature action. It requires us to grow, which brings to the question, how mature are you spiritually? How mature are you spiritually? I think many times we uh, think we're a lot more mature than we really are. Sometimes I think we might maybe still in our teenage years when it comes to 
really our truth understanding because it's that part of us that's still in adolescence. And again, I'm not condemning adolescence, but uh, you, we really want to have a more mature understanding of life and the roles that we play and how we show up in the relationships and especially in our spiritual commun community too. In order to have a connection with this Ahava love, we need to be engaged daily in loving actions. Are all the actions you do this day, are they loving? Everything we do can be done with this, this energy. Everything, uh, every behavior, every thought, everything we touch can be touched with this Ahava love. It's love to love. You're loving because it's unconditioned and you give it because that's what your nature is to give. Divine Ahava love is not living in a fantasy-based world either. I want to say too, because sometimes in truth, we, we focus on high ideals, divine ideas. And in reality, sometimes we don't always meet that high standard, but we're still aiming for the truth. We're aiming for the sun. We're aiming for the star in our life. We're aiming for the highest understanding so we can envision it and clothe it and be it. I'd like to share a story with you that expresses this, this idea in a relationship situation. One night, a father and a son went to a restaurant. After, seated, or after they were seated, the son called the waiter over and they ordered food. The father was weak, and while he was eating, he dropped his food all over himself, the table, the floor, his shirt, and his trousers. The son remained calm, shared stories with his father, and just kept on with their dinner. The other diners watched with disgust as the father was not able to eat properly and he kept spilling all of his food everywhere. The other diners were embarrassed by the spectacle that was happening at that booth. After finishing eating the dinner, the son quietly took his father to the bathroom, and there he wiped off the food, the stains from his shirt, his trousers. He recombed his dad's hair, and he cleaned his dad's glasses. As the son and dad left the uh, bathroom, the diners watched in dead silence this scene that this, this father and son were making. And they were still gasping, and they were embarrassed for them for what they had uh, done and kind of the commotion they called, they caused in this restaurant. And they felt ashamed for the son that the son had to really deal with this out in public. The son went to the cashier, paid the bill, left a tip, and they both headed for the restaurant's door slowly. Hold on, we're going to pick up that story. This is from a very famous Swami, uh, Vekananda, and it is. You have to grow from the inside out. None can teach you. None can make you spiritual. There is no other teacher but your own soul. That is pure Ahava love. That is pure Ahava love of truth. We are the teachers of our own souls. We are the people that awaken to who we are. We can awaken to our divinity this, this Advent season. But the question is, are we going to? Do we really want to go deeper into the mysteries of this Advent season, using these divine ideas of Advent to bring out a new essence within us? I will say when you live in this love to love energy or Ahava love, it is non-defensive. It is openness. It doesn't have angry reactions, especially when we are personally given feedback. When's the last time somebody gave you some feedback and you weren't too happy about it and yet you knew what they were saying was honest? So you can give feedback and it can be given in a hava way, meaning that you're being honest, but it doesn't have to be spoken in spite or with an angry tone. You can give instruction. You can give a real critical response. But with a hava, it's done in love. So you know you're there to build them up, not tear them down. We need to remain loving and healthy and to be uh, in loving and healthy relationships means we need to have more closeness in our life. I believe we need more Ahava love and not just during the month of December. What about May? What about June? What about August? What about every day? 
rediscovering for us what Ahava love can mean. It's the cohesiveness that keeps this presence, which we call God or divine mind, with us. We're saturated within us. We're saturated within it. Why aren't we calling upon it? Why aren't we using it? Why aren't we tapping into it? No matter what we're doing, we should. And that's what this time of the year can help us to remember. Are we willing to hear feedback when others are saying things? Are we willing to even hear when maybe we want to be more defensive? Maybe this season, maybe this year, we can have the idea that we can have a, a heart, which is a havala, but we can listen and see with a hava eyes and a hava hearing, meaning that we hear what they're really saying and we use the lens of love and we take it upon us to listen to what is being said and we can apply it, we can use it, we can implement it in our lives. And this is from our co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore. The healing, peace-giving, joy-filling, prospering ideas of God's love, life, and substance are filling the mind and heart, quickening new energies in the body. That's what we want to do. That's how we heal ourselves. That's one of the reasons why Myrtle was able to heal herself of tuberculosis. She was given a, a death sentence, but she didn't go upstairs to whine and complain. It's not fair. It's not fair. I have kids. I shouldn't have to deal with this. I'm married. What she did is she went upstairs and she rediscovered the Christ within her. I would say that she rediscovered love, a hava love, because when you have a hava love, you have life, you have energies, you have a new lease in your own consciousness which means our relationships thrive. People live differently. They show up differently. They show up as the Christ. They love and they give a love space. You give authentic understanding. Again, you're open and you're vulnerable to new experiences in your own life. You're willing to say, well, I haven't done, I haven't done this before, but I'm willing to be open. I'm willing to see how this one is going to turn out. I'm willing to see what God's going to do with this new adventure that I've just encountered. That's a Hava love. That's also a Hava wisdom. And this is from the famous Victor Hugo. When you see people in your life, when you're watching cable news channels, when you're flipping through your phone or you're tweeting, do you see other human beings? Do you really see the face of God in front of you? We should. We should love those souls, even if they don't agree with us, even if they have different understandings, even if they've made us wrong. They still deserve a certain amount of respect because they are created out of the image and likeness. They are created out of Ahava energies, just like us. Again, are we open to Ahava love and unconditioned love, or are we closed? I think many of us in our life, as we grow older, we become more sour, we become more judgmental, we become more really conditioned in our thinking. This is the season as we go into Christmas and really in the Advent season and the ideas that we're studying is to have a new Ahava understanding of hope, of faith, of peace, and also of love. In Ahava love, Ahava love, excuse me, we are sharing new activities. We're visiting new places. We're breaking old routines. Maybe this could be the season this Christmas that you break some old routines. I'm not saying there's certain things you can't do. I'm not saying you can't have your eggnog. I'm not saying you can't put tinsel on the tree. I'm not saying you can't have popcorn and uh, ras raspberries, uh, cranberries on, you know, decorate your tree. You can do all that. But I encourage you to do a new activity. Do something different. Make it special. And I don't know what that activity may be, but I will say if you go into the silence, whatever it will be this year, Spirit will tell you. And I encourage you to implement that and see what kind of new adventure it can bring into this Christmas season. I will say that Ahava love breathes freshness into stale anything that's stale, whether it's relationships, whether it's activities that we're doing, uh, Hava love is invigorating. It really invigorates us to stand up, not to be pompous, not to be a show off, but to stand up in the, and claim the Christ authority within us. 
And now back to my story. Just then, as one of the older diners called out to the young man as they were leaving the restaurant, he said, did you leave something? The young man turned around and said, no, sir. And another diner from across the restaurant spoke up. Yes, you have, young man. You have lost something. Or I should say you've left something. You have left a love to love lesson for every child and every, the hope of every father and mother today. You modeled what it means to be a child. What I love about that story is it invites us to show up in the moment. To show up and not be judgmental. You know, things are spilled or whatever. Or something happens, we soil our clothes. Woo! They can always be laundered. But I think we can really show up differently. Because the son was most concerned about having his father have a good dinner and to show that he had an affection for his father. It's really the power of that story. I like to say that our parents never felt embarrassed when we were kids. So why should we be embarrassed when we're around people that are up in years and they don't seem to be doing things as gracefully as they should? Maybe that... Uh, that situation with those diners that were gasping and they're embarrassed for the son because he had to deal with this. Maybe those diners could look at the situation a little bit differently and realize the son was really expressing and living out a Hava love, a love that's unconditioned. That son was there for his father like his father was there for him. It's very humbling and it's also very invigorating because it gives us a new understanding and a lease on what love can mean for each one of us. And this is from Raymond Charles, Charles Barker, who is a very famous, uh, re he was a unity ordained minister, but also a, a religious science minister in New York City. All the love there is in the world is in you and around you this instant. See, we talk about truth, the holy now moment, the holy Ahava moment right here, right now. But here's the deal. Are you listening? Do you even care? You more concerned about what you're going to have for lunch? You more concerned about who's going to be playing on the Super Bowl? Are you more concerned about whatever, 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 whatever? Let's be concerned this Sunday on our own self-love, our own love to love, our own Ahava love within our own life. Because if we can experience this deep transforming love, it truly transforms all of our life and all of our life energies which means that we really become self-honest and we have more self-integrity. We're not into deception. We're not into duping people. Ha <laughs> ha, I got you that time. You know, that's, that's not the way it is. When we play Yahtzee, we play by the rules. Or we start the game off saying that we're not going to play by the rules. This, this Sunday, I invite you to really play by Ahava rules. The idea of love, an unconditioned love that can truly show up in all the activities that we do. So we're truly born again. We are rebirthed into a, a higher understanding of our own Christ's nature, which means that we tell the truth. We're open to new lessons and we're open to be the people that we have come to be. We give up deception. We give up on uh, being uh, what I would say a phony, a phony uh, experience or a phony uh, misrepresentation that sometimes we do. I mean, if we're having a bad day, we say we, we're just, you know, we're having a bad day. We don't make up an excuse. Oh, it's a great day. And, you know, it's a terrible day. You know, you're a little bit frustrated. Take a breath. Take a half a breath. Let's breathe in love and let's release that love into the situation. Let's be authentic. I don't believe you can be authentic unless you have experienced Hava love on some level. In order to know authentic love, we must trust ourselves first and we truly want to achieve a better and higher and more pure understanding of love, which really is the energy, the cohesiveness that holds this planetary system, all the atoms and the molecules together. That's what we're talking about. And this is from George Harrison. The world is ready for a mystic revolution, a discovery of the God in each of us. Where's God to you? Where's God located? 
You know, I say on Sunday, it's the God within, the indwelling Christ. We're created out of the image and likeness of God. This Sunday, I'm saying we're created out of Ahava, an unconditioned love. But unless you believe it, unless you take it into your everyday life, it's not going to really mean much to you. It's not going to make this Christmas any different than the Christmas of last year or the 40 years ago or any Christmases that will come in the future. We need to be in the moment, be in on a Hava moment of honesty. And again, in this love to love understanding, we understand each other and we're willing to meet people in the middle. We're willing to be reasonable. When's the last time you were really reasonable, even in a situation that you were frustrated with? You agree to be reasonable. You agree to meet in the middle and be a reasonable soul. That's what a, a mature spiritual person does. Our souls are here to be seen. We're here to be felt. We're here to share our perspectives. We're here to change our perspectives. But we can't do it if we're not really living the ideas that we call to be truth, if we're not using them and allowing them truly to truly be knitted through all of our thoughts, our images, and our feelings. And this is, again is from our co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore. Man's own experiences and growth determines his concept of Jehovah or the Lord. And we could also say uh, a women or woman's own, a woman's own experiences are, and growth determines her concept of Jehovah or the Lord. So it goes back to this idea of what do you believe this presence of God is? Do you believe it's an old man? Do you believe it's an old woman? Do they have a cape? Do they have a long beard? Does she have flowing hair? I mean, I think those are such primitive ideas, cartoonish ideas. And in truth, we really stress this idea. It's a presence because it's always present, which means that a hava love can always be tapped into regardless of where you might be. That is what's comforting. That is where we really have remembered who we are. It also allows us to let go of the false ego within each and every one of us. We all have an ego. We all have a little bit of bloated nothingness that pops out when our, when our uh, triggers are uh, flipped or we're something that really gets us all tied in a knot. Question is, why do we need to even have a knot? Why do we have to even have soul triggers? It's a question in reflection we can take into meditation because I believe we should be showing up level and balance and an ahava consciousness, meaning that we're in harmony and peace and wisdom. And that doesn't mean our world is always perfect. It doesn't mean you never burn the cake. It doesn't mean you always make the green lights, but it means you're living in the moment. You're breathing in an ahava understanding of unconditioned love. And in closing, I'd like to say an Ahava love is a healing flame. An Ahava love is a mirror to our own soul's divinity. This morning, I invite you as we celebrate the third Sunday in Advent to rediscover love, unconditioned love, Ahava love, which is the Hebrew word for love that was used in their scriptures. Rediscover what Ahava love, Ahava energy, what it can mean for each and every one of us. All of us have places to grow. All of us have new understandings to experience. May this be the Sunday that we truly consciously accept the idea that we are created out of love. We are created out of an essence that is indestructible. We are truly a Hava love in demonstration. And we just know this goes forth this week to transform our lives. May this be the week of a Hava love for you. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service. We have the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, and our tithes. Invite you to take whatever your gift may be. Invite you, you can go to unityway.com and get our physical address. You can go to unityway.com and do electronic donation. You can just go to unityway.com and there's lots of stuff listed there. Uh, also, some of my past lessons. If you want to go back and listen to re-listen to truth, truth is good no matter when we present it. Truth is truth. But I invite you this morning, this Sunday, the third uh, Sunday in Advent. This is love. I invite you to imbue your gift with a love, 
an understanding of unconditioned love. And if you join me, please, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now this is the time for our prayer of protection. Protection to me is really when we have remembered who we are, that we're the Christ, not only for ourselves, but for all humanity. May we again say this prayer not only for ourselves, but all humanity and also this glorious world in which we live and move and have our being, this beautiful planet, the soil, the water, the trees, the atmosphere, truly this galaxy in which we live and all the other galaxies beyond, because it's all knitted together by a hava love. If you join with me, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Discover love. Discover Ahava love this Sunday. And we just say thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. <laughs>